Please stand for the reading of the Gospel account of St. John, the Passion of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. At that time, Jesus went forth with his disciples over the brook of Kedron, where there was a garden into which he and his disciples entered. And Judas also, who betrayed him, knew the place, because Jesus has often resorted thither together with his disciples. Judas, therefore, having received a band of soldiers and servants from the chief of priests and the Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said to them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith to them, I am he. And Judas also, who betrayed him, stood with them. As soon then as he had said to them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Again, therefore, he asked them, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore you seek me, let these go away, that the word might be fulfilled which he had said, Of them whom thou hast given me, I have not lost any one. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. And the name of the servant was Malchus. Then Jesus said to Peter, Put up thy sword into the scabbard. The chalice which my father hath given me, shall not I drink it? Then the band and the tribune and the servants of the Jews took Jesus and bound him, and they led him away to Annas first, for he was father-in-law to Caiaphas, who was the high priest in that year. Now Caiaphas was he who had given the counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. And that disciple was known to the high priest, and went in with Jesus into the court of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door without. Then the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to her that kept the door, and brought in Peter. And the maid that waited at the door saith to Peter, Art not thou also one of this man's disciples? He saith, I am not. Now the servants and ministers stood at a fire of coals, because it was cold, and warmed themselves, and with them was Peter also standing, and warming himself. The high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world, I have always taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whether all the Jews resort, and in secret I have spoken nothing. Why askest thou me? Ask them who have heard what I have spoken to them. Behold, they know what things I have said. And when he had said these things, one of the servants standing by gave Jesus a blow, saying, Answerest thou the high priest so? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, give testimony of the evil. But if well, why strikest thou me? <coughs> and Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. And Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They said therefore to him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? And he denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a kinsman to him whose ear Peter cut off, saith to him, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Then Peter again denied, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they led Jesus from Caiaphas to the governor's hall, and it was morning. And they went not into the hall, that they might not be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. Pilate therefore went out to them and said, What accusation bring you against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him up to thee. 
Pilate then said to them, Take him you, and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said to him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. That the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he said, signifying what death he should die. Pilate therefore went into the hall again, and called Jesus, and said to him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or have others told it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thy own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee up to me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would certainly strive that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from hence. Pilate therefore said to him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. For this was I born, and for this came I into the world, that I should give testimony to the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate saith to him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews, and saith to them, I find no cause in him. But you have a custom that I should release one unto you at the Passover. Will you therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Then therefore Pilate took Jesus and scourged him, and the soldiers, plaiting a crown of thorns, put it upon his head, and they put on him a purple garment, and they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews, and they gave him blows. Pilate therefore went forth again, and saith to them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that you may know that I find no cause in him. So Jesus came forth bearing the crown of thorns and the purple garment. <laughs> and he saith to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests, therefore, and the ministers had seen him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith to them, Take him you and crucify him, for I find no cause in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to the law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate therefore had heard this saying, he feared the more, and he entered into the hall again. And he said to Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Speakest thou not to me? Knowest thou not that I have the power to crucify thee, and I have the power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou shouldst not have any power against me, unless it were given thee from above. Therefore, he that hath delivered me to thee hath the greater sin. And from henceforth Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, if thou release this man, thou art not Caesar's friend. For whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. Now when Pilate had heard these words, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in the place that is called the Lithostrotos, and in Hebrew, Gabbatha, and it was the parasheve of the Passover, about the sixth hour. And he saith to the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then therefore he delivered him to them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him, to, he led him forth to that place which is called Calvary, but in Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side, and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title also, and he put it upon the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. 
The title, therefore, many of the Jews did read, because the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Greek, and in Latin. Then the chief priests to the Jews said to Pilate, Write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified him, took his garments, and they made four parts to every soldier a part, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. They said then one to another, Let us not cut it, but let us cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled which saith, They have parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture they have cast lots. And the soldiers did indeed these things. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary of Cleophas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold thy son. After that he saith to the disciples, Behold thy mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own. Afterwards Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now there was a vessel set there full of vinegar, and they put a sponge full of vinegar about hyssop and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had taken the vinegar, he said, It is consummated. And bowing his head, he gave up the ghost. Then the Jews, because it was the parachief, that the bodies might not remain upon the cross, on the Sabbath day, for that was a great Sabbath day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. The soldiers therefore came, and they broke the legs of the first and of the other that was crucified with him. But after they were come to Jesus, when they saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers opened his side with a spear, and immediately there came out blood and water. And he that saw it hath given testimony, and his testimony is true. And he knoweth that he saith true, that you also may believe. For these things were done, that the scripture might be fulfilled, you shall not break a bone of him. And again, another scripture saith, they shall look on him whom they have pierced. And after these things, Joseph of Arimathea, because he was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave leave. He came, therefore, and took away the body of Jesus, and Nicodemus also came, he who at the first came to Jesus by night, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. They took therefore the body of Jesus and wrapped it in linen cloths with the spices as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified and in the garden a new sepulcher wherein no man had yet had been laid. Therefore because of the parachute of the Jews they laid Jesus there for the sepulcher was nigh at hand. 